There is more livestock diversity in Africa than on any other continent in the world. These animals are adapted to a wide range of harsh environments. They can survive and reproduce without depending on expensive feeds, medicines or other care. But the past 20 years have forced great changes on livestock keepers in Africa. People now need to make regular incomes from their farms. Expanding mostly urban markets for livestock products offer rare money-making opportunities. Some indigenous breeds are disease-resistant and others can withstand feed and water shortages. However, most of them are small, give little milk or meat and so do not meet farmers' needs for food and cash. Millions of poor livestock keepers are importing or cross-breeding to get more productive livestock. This is happening so quickly that some purebred local animals are increasingly hard to find. Today, problems like climate extremes, crop failures and disease outbreaks mean the less resilient imported or crossbred animals are dying more and more frequently, leaving growing numbers of people hungry. In the past, the hardy indigenous livestock provided security for their owners. Now, there is the real danger that many of Africa's indigenous livestock breeds will disappear, just as their hardy traits become more and more important for food security across the region. A journey across rural Africa is a journey through livestock breeds. In West Africa, for example, indigenous animals evolved alongside human cultures, suiting specific environments and providing a wide range of necessities. <laughs> But today, global forces are reaching even into the villages and changing lifestyles. Many West African nations are among the world's poorest. Natural resources are being depleted by the demands of mushrooming populations. Most people in the region still support themselves through small-scale agriculture. But as communities take on more elements of modern life, farmers now need to generate regular incomes from their farms. Life expectancy has gone up, while unused land available for expansion has shrunk. Making money from farming is getting increasingly hard. Tout ceci doublé de la de la pression démographique. Il y a à tout moment des conflits liés à l'occupation des terres, donc des conflits fonciers. The search for new agricultural land and alternative work opportunities is speeding up deforestation. This is resulting in drying environments and more bushfires. It is also pushing farmers into places where diseases had previously formed natural barriers. The tropical woodland belt that crosses the borders of many West African countries is home to the sese fly. Sese flies transmit the deadly disease of cattle trypanosomosis, which kills millions of animals annually. 
Traditionally, small communities of people managed to live in these areas because their livestock evolved alongside the sese and developed a degree of trypanosomosis resistance. But these breeds are often small and so not suited to commercial production. Desperate for higher incomes and unable to keep two kinds of herds, many smallholder farmers are replacing their local livestock with imported or crossbred cattle. These changes are affecting huge areas in Mali and other African countries. Forest clearance for agriculture is beginning to reduce places where the sese can breed, but remaining infested areas are still very large. At the same time, populations of less hardy imported or crossbred cattle are growing quickly. These animals need good feed and water, but forest clearance and pressure on natural resources are degrading environments. Large numbers of animals are increasingly vulnerable to diseases, and trypanosomosis therefore kills millions of livestock annually. To keep expensive imported purebred or crossbred cattle alive within the sese belt, complex drug treatments are needed since there are no vaccines for trypanosomosis. But veterinary services cost a lot. Imported animals also need better quality feeds and other care. These herds are proving expensive for farmers. So many have been letting go of their local livestock completely to solve their short-term cash flow problems. Few of these livestock keepers have had much information or training about breeding. Though many are benefiting from first-generation crosses that are both hardy and productive, they do not know how to sustain these benefits across future generations. Missing is the understanding that a stock of pure-bred trypanotolerant cattle is key to their continued success as dairy and meat producers. Local livestock breeds are therefore disappearing in many places, just as environments are also degrading. Increasing drought and disease episodes are causing many animal deaths. Ensuite, il y a beaucoup d'autres maladies tropicales qui sont là, hein, qui existent depuis des, des siècles, depuis des années, auxquelles le bétail local est adapté, qu'une race exotique ne peut pas. Les parasitoses, toutes les maladies sanguines, tout ça, c'est des maladies purement endémiques qui sont là. In early 2000, this situation became so serious that national research and development institutes from the Gambia, Mali, Senegal and Guinea came together with international scientists. Out of this unusual partnership grew a research and development project aiming to characterize remaining indigenous livestock breeds.
hybrid and are devised on the best ways for farmers to benefit from them and use them sustainably. As a first step, the team members chose representative sites in the Gambia, Guinea, Mali and Senegal in places that gave examples of the advantages of indigenous animals. These sites were selected because people still practice production systems involving indigenous livestock. Large sesefly numbers pose acute disease problems and natural resources have on the whole survived recent changes. One of the ideas behind the research project is that the hardy genes within these breeds might become useful for food security across the world as climates become more variable and extreme. But it is not possible to expect poor farmers to conserve breeds that do not make them enough money. By working to improve animal breeding, feeding and healthcare, as well as environments, the project aims to raise productivity within indigenous herds so that farmers have good reason to go on using them. The animals performance et placé dans les élevages traditionnels pour améliorer la production et la productivité, c'est-à-dire la production laitière et la production bouchère de l'endamant. Capacity building and strengthening is also key. Increasing access to knowledge about breeding, market facilities, animal feeding and environmental conservation will make this approach sustainable. Market and credit access are being targeted along with the processing and commercialization infrastructures. La prochaine étape vise essentiellement à passer à la réalisation des infrastructures qui permettront de valoriser le bétail endémique. Je veux parler de la réalisation de marchés à bétail, la réalisation de centres d'abattage et la réalisation de mini laiteries. The development of enabling policies across the region is also key. Maintenant, comme le projet est là, on est en train d'initier ces politiques. Sinon, avant, il n'y en avait pas. C'est la raison pour laquelle j'ai créé ce projet. Parce que le problème de devoir de bétail, c'est monnaie courante ici. Si maintenant, si les bœufs sont, sont protégés, je crois que ça, ferait la, ça, ça, ça serait la bienvenue pour la communauté. The bottom line is to improve the value of these animals by improving their productivity, by improving their market value, and by also changing policy. So if you put all this together, these animals will be getting more appealing to the farmers. The spotlight of climate change is highlighting issues surrounding the conservation of indigenous livestock. This project is designing ways to assess what might be useful and needs to be conserved before it is too late. This is the first project targeting management of domestic animal genetic resources. And the lesson we'll be learning from this project will be valuable for Asia, for Latin America, for any other place in the world where the same problems are being faced. By helping build rural economies that make use of unique hardy indigenous breeds, the project will not only improve livelihoods through better family nutrition and incomes, but also save resources that could help with world food security problems in the future.